Hey, you guys. Yes. We are back. Full effect. Back in full effect, okay? Like, let me tell you something. The past three weeks have been mighty interesting, okay? Um, it was cold out there this past week, okay? Let me tell you something. 19 degrees. The field was 12. I am from California. This does not work for me. I've never dealt with this before in my life. So yeah, cold, cold. Yes, it was cold. But anyway, um, I wanted to come and talk about like a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to talk about like what these three weeks have been like as far as um, the fields. So we did um, week one, we did week two, and then um, finalized the third week. So I'm gonna go through that. I'm also gonna talk about pretty much my overview and my feel about everything um, and how the training has been going thus far, which is really great because it's a, it's a great like experience. You meet a lot of great people, but anyway, I'll go into that. And then also, um, I want to talk about pretty much my reasons for taking down some some of my videos. So I know that um, the first three weeks I was here, um, I went through um, weekly videos and weekly submissions, which was really great. And I want to say thank you to everybody who did tune in, watched, liked, subscribed, everything. Really appreciate you guys. Um, but essentially for taking down the videos and um, there was a recent kind of situation that happened in regards to doing videos with your uniform. Now, I personally wasn't called out, but there, there were a couple of lieutenants that were called out about it. And so with that, I said, you know what? I need to do my due diligence and do my job and take down um, my videos that had me in uniform. So the videos, the three videos that I did um, with me in uniform, I did take those down and I apologize because they were really great content. It was exceptional content, I felt like. Um, and it's not the fact that the content wasn't, wasn't appropriate. Um, it's just the fact that you are in the US Army Reserve or in the Army and you being in a video uh, with your uniform, um, it just doesn't look good. And so whatever it is that you say is a reflection of the U.S. Army. And so you don't want, I don't, I don't want that to kind of get convoluted. And so, um, yeah, so I had to go ahead and just delete those, uh, videos, but essentially I'll redo those videos, um, so that you, so that people who are coming into the military or coming into Bullock, um, they do not miss that content, right? So I'll go ahead and I'll re redo those videos, but within civilian clothes, not my army uniform, okay? So yes, that was what the big deal was, where the scandal was. Um, it was a scandal because it was, it was and still is a hot topic right now amongst us lieutenants and captains. So yeah, we had a three week FTX. So the first week was five days, five days long. The second week was three days long. And then the third or the third week, which is this week was uh, Monday through Thursday. So I'll go into and explain what each week was like for me um, and what it is that we learned. So let's start off with the first week. The first week we went over weapons and um, went over what weapons training looked like. We also went over um, how to disassemble and reassemble weapons and radios. We also went over Turner kits. We went over a lot of various things. I'll go deep, I'll deep dive into that as well. Um, and then also for week one and week two, as far as food is concerned, um, we had hot chow for breakfast and hot chow for dinner. Um, but for lunch though, we had to do an MRE and you know, I stay ready with my snacks. So we had snacks on deck. Um, I made sure to bring a bunch of snacks and I thought that I wasn't going to utilize all of my snacks, 
but I did and I still have some left over, which is really great. So um, I sure did come back a little, you know, my fitted uniforms were no longer fitted. They were, they, my clothes got big out there, meaning, you know, we wasn't eating like that. Anyway, um, nor were they feeding us like that for breakfast and dinner. Um, like I'm talking about peace, like piece of food but then they'll ask you to come up for seconds so either you go up for seconds your stomach hurt at night or um you just thug it out until the next morning or the the next meal essentially um but yeah so week one we went over um the weapons qualifications so we went out to the range and we zeroed which means um pretty much you were and I'll I'll put a picture um, of what my what what it looked like as far as um, zeroing, and then we also did the pop ups as well. So each pop up had a certain amount of time, and then um, and those were over three or four days so um like the first day we went ahead and we zeroed um our platoon which was fourth platoon crazy horse we went ahead and we did uh we did the weapons the weapons in the uh, in the range so we were the um range kind of we were the range crew so we went around and we did um range detail and that's um putting in ammunition, getting magazines together for people to zero with. Um, and during that time, we were allowed to uh, we were allowed to go ahead and shoot as well. So I went ahead and I zeroed. I did a lot better um, than I did at DCC. So at DCC, I was all the way in the right quadrant, upper right quadrant. It was a hot mess. Like I had no idea what I was doing. Um, but then but then again, um, I didn't know what I was doing. So this time around, I was able to focus. Um, I was able to fully like just, I was getting it. So I understood what that meant. So, which is great. I was like, I just want to hit, I just want to hit a target. I just want to hit somewhere in the target, which is what my goal was. Um, and so I was able to zero and that was exceptional. I was really proud of myself. Like, yes, girl, you did that. So I went ahead and I did that and it was great. Um, outside of that, um, we had uh, the EST, which is a simulation kind of training site. So we went ahead and we did that and you go into these little buildings. I did that at DCC as well. So you'll do that at DCC and you'll do that at Bullock. Um, and you go into like this little room and they'll have like four or five different um, simulators, um, like one big screen and they have five different lanes and you shoot on those lanes, but it's um, computerized, but the the weapon actually feels like a real weapon. So um, we practice on um, the M4s. Is it the M4s? Yes, we practice on those um, and just rifles. So that was really good. I did pretty well on that. Um, didn't do too great, but it gives you a little bit of more practice like it would for um, zeroing or the pop-ups when you have to qualify, okay? So that's what that was. That was another day. And then we went back and we zeroed for the people who didn't pass zeroing. So if you did pass zeroing, you helped around the range. Um, so I got to know the range. I got to put up signs. I got to, I, I really delved into everything during these trainings, especially hands-on training, because I'm a very hands-on type of person. And so I need to, I need to be able to do it so that I can be um, better acclimated with things. Um, I would not necessarily say like, I'm, uh, like I'm a book person, but I'm really like better at doing things. I, I need experience. So essentially on a rant, Essentially, um, just going to the like weapons and being a part of that detail, I was able to um, delve into and you know touch and feel on things um, as far as like the weapons are concerned and how to run um, kind of that run that detail essentially. So that was an experience in itself. I really enjoyed that. Um, and then we were also. Um, we also were the DFAC kitchen details. So that was interesting as well. So we had to make sure that the DFAC area at the TTB, which is the training site, when we were there, um, we went ahead and we 
we were the de facto crew. So um, that was interesting as well. Also, to backtrack, we before going to um, the TTB or the training site, which is what it's called, before going to the true TTB, um, we and doing our full execution of the three weeks um, FTX training. That first week, um, the week before that, we went, or not the week before, but that Friday before, we went ahead and we um, viewed the site just to get a better feel for um, what we'll need at the site alongside of grabbing our rucksacks and grabbing a couple other items that they issued to us that day. So during that week, I was a platoon sergeant. It was it was interesting. It was fun. Um, so they assigned different leadership roles for different individuals. So I was a platoon sergeant and um, for that week. And so that week we had movement. So meaning we had to form and um, we had to get information at a certain at a certain time early in the morning. You had to get accountability. Um, and I was in charge of that. And so I would send up those numbers to the platoon leader and and then the platoon leader will send it up the chain. So um, it was interesting. It was it was really fun. It was insightful. I liked it. I learned a lot. Um, so that week was really interesting. Um, of course, we had recalls. So recalls are just they'll call you out during the weekend, and um, it it will they'll come out during the weekend and they'll say, okay, you have to get information within twenty minutes just to make sure that people aren't getting off base or going off base because right now um, with us, um, with with the pandemic, we can't be out here in these streets like that. And so um, they wanna make sure that we are on base and we stay on base because we can't leave base. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. So also for week one, we also did the pop. Ups. So I'll provide pictures for that as well in regards to the pop-ups. Um, they have, I believe, 50 meters, 100 meters, 150, 175, and then 300. So um, I did well with that as well. I qualified, so that was great. Could I have done better? Absolutely. I could have done way better, but I, I was just happy that I qualified. I mean, at one point in time, like I said, I couldn't even shoot it on the target. So we got on the target and we got we got qualified. So that to me is all that matters. Um, and we zeroed. It was fine. So um, that was interesting. And then those days, um, we also learned how to reassemble a weapon, disassemble a weapon, radio um, assembly, disassembly, a functions check, clearing clearing a weapon and we also learned how to input the information in the in the radio so that we could do a nine line medivac so of course i am a part of a med um that is where that's my department and so um we need to be able to request a nine line medivac so with that um i think one of the things that i would tell new officers coming into Bullock is trying to understand that stuff prior to coming into the training course. Um, although you'll learn a lot of that early on, especially in the classroom, when you are in the actual setting, you're going to have to learn that. You're going to have to learn how to do a functions check. Um, you're also going to have to learn um, how to disassemble and reassemble an M17 and an M4, like things like that. Like my thumbs are raw right now. And the reason why is because it's a lot of flicking and a lot of pushing and a lot of like, it's just a mess. And as you know me, I try and get my nails done every two to three weeks. Um, so I've been doing my own like nails and manicure. But anyway, um, I digress. When it comes to learning this stuff, I would suggest learning it on early on um, so that when you're there, you're not really stressed. You're just like, okay, I've done this before. Um, and so it's a lot of repetition. Like I said, for me, I'm a repetitive person and I need to be able to do repetition so that I can get it right. Um, so I passed all of those and um, I went ahead. So so now let's transition into week two. So week two, we did land navigation and we did testing for our qualifications for the weapons as far as disassembling, reassemble, functions check, clearing, 
and then also the radio check. So the way they did it, it was really cute. It was nice. So <laughs> we went to one site and we had to um, do land navigation. So we had a starting point and you had four people with you. So you would do a starting point and you would do a land nav. They would give you grid, co grid coordinates and you would have to do land navigation from that starting point to your first stop. And your first stop would be your M4 qualification, your, M, um, your M17 qualification, or it would be um, radio qualifications. So each spot that they had you go to was your testing location. So we went to the M4 and the M17 location, and then we had to uh, plot our point and go to the next spot and then plot our point there um, for radios. And then we did our radio testing and requested our line, nine line money back, which I suggest everybody look up. Um, and then went over to our next spot. And so it was really interesting to, you know, go through land navigation and also being able to do our testing. So that was interesting. Um, and after that, the following day, after the testing, the following day, we went ahead and we went to, uh, we did land nav. So we did night land nav and day land nav. And I know for some it's like, oh my God, night land nav? Yes, night, night land nav. That, that's exactly what I said. Night land nav is land navigation that starts at like 3 a.m. And um, it ends at 10 a.m. So you go from um, dusk all the way through dawn into like sometime mid morning. So our time frame start time, um, we had we started at like 4:30 ish. We had to report at 4 a.m. and then we ended at 10. So um, we utilized like an hour, like maybe 30 minutes to an hour to grid eight points. So they gave us eight points and we went ahead and we we did our grid coordinates and our land navigation on our site, right? So we did that, which was really great. We did it on our map and everything. Um, we utilized the protractor, we utilized the compass. We had to check in, check out, um, and we did it all around the training site. So from there, um, we found our spots and there was one spot in particular that was in the bush. So I was with my buddy, Hassan Latif. Yes, he is an amazing battle buddy. But anyway, we did our land map together and he's really big on going around through trails. So we went through the trails. We, we did all of that. We found um, three out of our eight points before dawn. Um, so it was awesome. So we were like, yeah, we're doing this. We're going to do this. Then we went and we went to go look for our fourth point. And it was a little ways away. It was about like 400 meters. So we had to walk a little ways away. When we get there, we're like, okay, so where's this point? And we look on the map and we were doing um, terrain. Like we were looking at terrain. And we look at the terrain and we're like, oh my goodness, this is in the middle of like vegetation like this is in the middle of like bush so we were like oh god so I'm like look we're gonna have to go in there like we are just gonna have to go through it we can't be going through these trails we have to just go in there and his mom's like okay like let's let's wait a minute and I'm just like all right we'll figure this out let's look for our fifth sixth our fifth and our sixth point. So we looked for our fifth and our sixth point, we found it. We still had two hours to burn. We found our seventh and eighth point. It was awesome. It was quick, quick, back to back. Amazing, we did so good. So we're like, okay, we passed. So you need six out of the eight points to pass. So we went ahead and we passed. It was awesome, it was amazing. Oh, also too, you can't bring your phone on land navigation. If you do, they will automatically recycle you, meaning you'll have to start from day one. And we didn't want to do that. So anyway, um, so I don't have any pictures of land navigation. Sorry. Um, but we went ahead, we did that. And by number, so that number four, that fourth spot, we were just like, we can't do this. Like, let's call it a wrap. And so we both said, so we both said, let's give ourselves until nine o'clock. 
by nine o'clock, we need to start heading back because we have to be back by 10. If we are not back by 10, we have to do land navigation all over again on a different day. So we said we didn't want to do that. So we went ahead and we went looking for that spot and we went through the bush. It took us about an hour and a half total to look for that spot, which is a long time for one point. But anyway, so we ended up finding a point at 9.04. And when I tell you Hassan was just like this way, and it was like, we're utilizing the compass. I was like, Hassan, we're utilizing the compass. You're going in there. You're going in there. We're going to find this spot. So we went in and he's like this way, this way, this way. We found it. And we were just so relieved. We were like, oh my gosh, we found it. We found it. So it was an amazing feeling. And then we were like, oh shit, it's 9.10. So it was like, all right, time to trek back. So we got back by like 9.40 because it was a, it was like about 600 meters. It was a long ways back to get back to the TTB. So we got back um, at about like 9.40. We got all of our points. We were good to go. So that was done. And then on top of that too, we left that day um, because it was Thanksgiving week. So we had Thanksgiving when we when we came back we were able to relax and then the next day was thanksgiving so we had thanksgiving here and it was so sweet so the defect from what i hear is the defect on thanksgiving for breakfast lunch and dinner um they do it really big for the soldiers for thanksgiving because we can't be here with our families we're just here with one another and so it was really interesting um to see that it was really insightful so i um was really happy that they did something for that we also played ultimate frisbee that day so i don't play ultimate frisbee no i don't mm -mm. no i play soccer like that's what i do so when they said oh yeah come out for ultimate frisbee i'm like excuse me but i played and i scored i don't know if it's called a touchdown a goal I don't know, but I sure did um, in like the semifinals. So it was awesome. I felt so good. It was it was nice. We had a really great time um, for Thanksgiving. It was nice. And then we came we came back. Um, and then after coming back to the hotel, we ended up getting ready and chilling. And then the hotel actually had a dinner for us, a Thanksgiving dinner. So um, super big shout out to the hotel ladies who who do our breakfast every morning for us so um they came together and they did thanksgiving for us so they had green bean casserole mashed potatoes sweet potatoes um corn casserole um they also had tofurkey um which was really sweet because she knew that there were a lot of vegans and vegetarians and so she made sure to get vegan um vegan options or vegetarian options for people um they had ham they had turkey they had gravy different types of pies um so it was really nice it was really nice definitely different than what i'm used to for thanksgiving me and my family we go all out for thanksgiving and it's just a really big party um but i am very blessed i'm very blessed at the fact that i was able to be here with my battle buddies on thanksgiving and we were all alive and well um, and so that was nice. That was really nice. And then we had um, a birthday, a little birthday gathering the next day um, on Black Friday. I did my shopping. A lot of people did their shopping online. Um, and it was Joe's birthday the following day. So Joe's birthday was on Saturday. Um, super big shout out to Joe um, for his birthday. That was really nice. So we just got together, we did a dinner for him um, and gave him his gifts and everything. And that was really nice. We drank, we were happy, we were merry. Like it was fun, it was really fun. So, um, and then we had to get ready on Sunday because Monday was going to be a really long week for us. So now let's talk about week three because week three is no joke. So Monday we had to report at 0430 at the hotel. And so we need to be in formation at 0400. Yeah, 4 a.m. Meaning we had to be, essentially, we had to leave here by 0330. 
and which means I woke up at 0 to 45 because you know I do my morning rituals I do my I do my coffee I, I do my prayers in the morning I gotta make sure you know things are together so yeah 2 45 was my wake up time I was not a happy camper and then going into that third week was a lot. So we we got four days off. So I was really happy about that. I was blessed about that. Like, okay, we got four days off. So week three is the AMED FTX. So like I said, that morning report time was 0430. So when we get there, they give us a brief about COVID um, and giving us a brief about Opera Operation Warp Speed. Um, which was really interested. It was interesting. It was very interesting. Um, it was very insightful. And it was about three hours long. So we get back to the CTB and they're like, all right, let's get to it. So there is roll one, roll two, and set lanes, which is um, small unit tactics. So, um, and they break it out into three days. So essentially AMED FTX is composed and comprised of 72 hours nonstop operations. So you're going Monday all day, Tuesday all day, Wednesday all day, and then you end Thursday morning. Yes, you heard me correct. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So... That was interesting, yeah. No showers, no hot chow. You get MREs and baby wipes. And those baby wipes are your personal baby wipes. Now, if you go back into my other videos, I remember telling y'all, have your baby wipes together. Have some soap nearby, cause you gonna smell sour, okay? <laughs> A mess, a mess. But I will say this. I experienced so much in week three than I did my entire army career. <laughs> AMED FTX is a beast. It's a beast, okay? Um, so my first role was role one. And so um, I will say this. You have to stay motivated throughout the entire 72 op 72 hour operations. When you beat one, when you're done with day one, continue with that motivation for day two. And continue, in, continue that motivation into day three. And you're just like, you know what? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna pound this out and stay motivated. Keep close people near you and stay motivated. I think that's the best advice that I can give um, in regards to FTX and doing the 72 hour operations. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot. But you also have to think about people or soldiers um, who are deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan um, and them dealing with so much on such a bigger scale and so much of dealing with that 365 days of the year. And so for me, I think that's what got me through is the fact that there are people that legitimately go through this like legitimately their lives are on the line for this um i'm just at a training site like you're fine like people actually like they die in these streets for this so that's what kept me motivated um alongside of having close close people around me who were also motivated i know i stayed away from the negative neg negativity i was just like yeah no i'm not here for that um we need to continue to be here like a family and continue to grind out with each other. So that I think that's the most advice that I could give anybody during AMED FTX um, is just count your blessings and understand that um, FTX is a beast. It's a beast. So yeah, so for AMED FTX, first the first day was uh, roll one. And so pretty much convoy. So you go through a convoy um they do a simulation of being like shot up the lmtvs the ftlas they're being shot up the humvees um and you have to be out there and back like bang 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 back right with blanks they gave us blanks and bvas bavs B bvas anyway they gave us blanks um and so we were shooting 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 and if we had any casualties we had to work on the casualties um with like turner kits and treatment bags it was awesome now my thing is is 
Um, I have experience within the medical field as far as administrative and hands-on, um, but applying a Turner kit, my first time was doing that um, during FTX. Applying a Turner kit, um, doing um, an Osman, Os Osmanian um, bandage, doing that, um, learning how to do uh, different like um, open wounds, open chest wound um, injuries, dealing with that. So let me tell you something. I walked out like, yes, you did that. You did that, ma'am. You did that. You learned hands-on training. And if you were ever to be put into combat or if anything was to happen, you know what to do. So it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, so yeah, first day, roll one, um, we learned how to do all of that. And we also um, learned just essentially how to be leaders. So essentially their training wasn't how you treat the patients as far as like treatment is concerned. It's mainly about how you as an officer, an AMED officer, how you lead, how you lead your unit, how do you lead your team to success. So we completed that and that was fun. So we, we did convoy, we did our convoy mission. We went from another spot, we did our AAR, which is pretty much a review of the day. And then from there, we went to our sleeping site. Let me tell you something that drop in temperature it was like 50 that day 50 55 that day that night at approximately six o'clock it dropped to about 30 degrees and I was just like wow so this is what we doing for sure for sure oh but it gets worse so we have our dinner our MRE don't think of it as anything meal ready to eat is what we had and we were like okay you need to set up this tent because when you have casualties coming in through the roll one there these are things that you're going to learn at bullock right so i know some people may be sitting here a little confused yeah you'll learn this as you go on through bullock um for those of you that are bullock officers or planning on entering into amed as an officer Okay, so you'll learn about all of this, but essentially what I'm saying, if it's gibberish to you right now, you'll learn about it. So um, casualties within the roll one, we had to set up a tent and um, we had to do our triage section and we had to do our medivac section. So the triage um, section had dime, um, which is delay, immediate, um, minimal and expected. And then we went through our medivac and we had to go through our medivac. Um, we kind of did a simulation as well so that they know where to place the patient in the um, F FLAs. So it was interesting. It was really interesting. Um, went through that and I will say by eight o'clock. So the sleep system, the way the sleep system worked is that um, every four hours, one team got sleep and then the next four hours another team got sleep so I was a part of the Bravo crew and so the Bravo crew went to sleep um, from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. and then the Alpha crew went to sleep at um, 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. so um, that was interesting so by 8 o'clock the temperature dropped to 20 by the time it was time to go to sleep the temperature was yes at 20 degrees with wind so the wind chill chill yes was about 10 degrees no 12 12 i think they said it felt like 12 degrees outside with frost yes with frost when i say tent the tent was for med the the medivac it was for the casualties we had no tents we had our sleep our, our sleeping system now i clutch my pearls because i know some of y'all are and some that are super like who are like they're just like yeah and so anyway i've never experienced this so mm -hmm. that was interesting i was like i don't know what's happening i made the mistake last night and for some who have military experience and sleeping bag experience and sleeping in the cold experience probably are gonna laugh at me and roll their eyes probably I slept with all my clothes on, all of them. I did not take off one single layer, took off my boots and literally 
delve into the sleeping bag, wrapped it around, and was like, yeah, we're going to sleep like this. No. No. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get down one, down to like your last layer. So you should like be in like your waffle bottoms and you know, a top, your, your undershirt and no socks and put all of your clothes that you're gonna wear in the next morning into your sleeping bag. And then your heat simulator in the sleeping bag will adjust to your temperature and warm you up. Yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. I was shivering all night. So for, <laughs> for four hours, I slept probably an hour. And then when you're cold, you gotta pee every so often. So yeah, and y'all know me, baby bladder. So it was an interesting night. It's an interesting night. Did I have an experience? Yes, I did. It was it was a it was an amazing experience because we all experienced it together. Um, I think we all woke up the next morning pissed off. Then on top of that, too, they said, "No, we're not taking the Humvees back. No, that's not what we're doing. No, you are rucking your asses back to the TTV." I said, "Interesting." They were like, "Yeah, okay, get your rucks together." Now, some of us, you know, who don't know any better, packed everything in our ruck. So our ruck was heavy. You know, my short little ass, I was just struggling that morning. I was struggling now that I look at it. I literally was praying through that march, through that ruck march, back to the TTV. I was praying hard, hard. I was like, Lord, look, my back is hurting. We got an hour of sleep. I was not happy at all. But we get to the TTV. And I was like, hallelujah, we done made it. So we get back and they're like, look, um, yeah, keep your rucks with you. I think everybody was pissed off when they heard that. Um, yeah, I think they were all pissed off. Like, no, we gonna go to the tent and we're gonna drop this stuff off. So then the guy, our night cadre, finally was like, yeah, you guys go ahead, drop your things off and you need to be back at 0500. Yeah, we woke up at about 3.30 that morning. So none of us were happy. So we get back and they're like, you're in the roll two. And we were like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Because roll two is like a little hospital, which means heaters. Everybody gets a heater. Oh my goodness, everybody gets a heater. We were so happy, so happy. Then they had me in patient hold for the first iteration. Listen, I was lit because that is something that I'm essentially used to. So we bring, um, if a patient needs to go through patient holds, you triage them. So you write their names down on the little wall, administration, figure out where they need to be placed on which bed, and you keep an eye on them. The nurse checks in with them, whatever, whatever. You look, you keep it until they are evacuated through Medivac when there's room in the FLAs. Bomb, 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 bomb. I was in my zone. And then I had great people around me too, so that was interesting. Then the second iteration, I was triage. So we had to go and collect the casualties. And let me tell you something, okay? These mannequins are probably like 200 pounds. And I'm like, look, there's four of us. Um, I'm a little mini thing, so I need the legs. I'll take the legs. I'll take the back of the patient. Like, y'all take the head and torso. I'm not doing anything else. Um, and, of course, assisting with Turner kits. Let me tell you something. I felt like superwoman out there. I was like, okay, look at you doing administration and clinical work. Yes. Utilizing my degree. Loved it. Um, so, I was in my zone. So, then we had our sleep schedule. So, now getting into the third iteration. We had our sleep schedule and we changed leadership. Our leadership, she was on something because she was like, okay, so this crew and this crew, you're doing this, you're doing this, and nobody was happy about it. She was like, okay, you guys get the first round of sleep. I was like, okay, cool, whatever, that's fine. So I ended up going back to my tent and I was the only one in my tent. Heater on blast, okay? Heater on blast. It was insane. But 
Um, and then I had um, Katie. Katie ended up coming back to the tent too. So there was the only two of us pitch black. We were knocked out, knocked out for our four hours sleep. Knocked out. Um, so that was awesome. Then we wake up and then they transition me um, to do treatment. So I was able to do treatment and moving patients to patient holds. Um, and that was interesting. So that was the rest of day two. So yeah, talk about tired, right? So we've tallied approximately four and a half hours of sleep in a 48 hour period, okay? So, and some people, there was one guy who the first night he was like, yeah, I can't sleep. The moon is too bright. I said, excuse me, you ain't tired? And he was like, my body's tired, but I can't turn off my brain. Yeah, the next day he lost a weapon and some more shenanigans. So I was like, yeah, that's on you. Yeah, no sleep, <laughs> that's on you. Um, have nothing to say to you. I will sleep. I will find some way to sleep. Mm -mm. So anyway. In that period of time, I'm looking at about four and a half hours of sleep, right? Italian. Um, remember, I am snacking. I'm not really eating the MREs because that constipation is real and I want to know parts of that. Um, so then Wednesday, we had our set lanes. And set lanes are small unit tactics. So they broke us out into different, um, different squads within that specific platoon. And so, or that specific task force, we were split into different squads. And so we had Mr. Hall, which is great because I like Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall is awesome. He's like, he's like a grandfather, right? But he's like, you got this, push through. Like he was helping us through everything. It was awesome. So um, each iteration that we had, we got better at. So for the small unit tactic, um, you're pretty much given a scenario and you have to lead your um, your squad or your unit um, to do certain things. So they would have aid and litter, they would have security, um, but different scenarios of like, okay, interacting with um, someone from a different country um, who's like a diplomat for not for that country and you're at war with that country. And so it was interesting to go through that. Um, one of the girls, she was prior deployed, prior, prior enlisted. And so she bodied the hell out of her scenario. Oh my gosh, she did so good. She did so good and she, she bossed up like, they, people were saying that that was the best iteration that they see, that they saw. The cadre said that that was the best iteration. And then yours truly had the last iteration. I'm not used to this. So, you know, I said, look, we going we gonna to push through this. Mm -hmm. I need, I told everybody, I said, this is a team effort. We are going to come together and we're going to do this. We're going to do this right. So, um. We ended up coming together and it was awesome. It was awesome. I literally started off telling them, we are about to light some shit up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're calling the bird from above. We're doing that. We're doing nine line muddy back. Yep, have yo weapons ready, magazines full. We go in full force, like literally. It was some Rambo shit. Like we were like, we're doing this. It was so dope. Because when I tell you the scenario was like the grand finale, it was the grand finale. We all came together. Although I was like leading, we all came together and we bodied it. Like when we were done, we were all like smiling because we were so happy. Not only was it our last day, but the way that we ended was awesome. It was awesome. So super fun. We really enjoyed that. We really enjoyed that. And then, um, then we went back to our starting point and um, we had dinner. We were chilling for a couple of hours. It was nice to be able to just chill and relax. Then they brought out soup and coffee. It was lit. I was like, oh yes, 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 yes. They brought out soup and coffee and we were like, oh my goodness, hallelujah, something hot. So then that night the temperature dropped about 30 degrees. Um, it was about, yeah, 30 degrees. And we slept under the stars again. Um, in the woods, but it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I did did get down to my last layer that night. I sure did, and I put my my clothes into my sleeping bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a nice night. I was able to sleep. I was able to sleep that night. Was roving guard too, 
So we had to do a patrol around our base point. So that was interesting to see as well. So that was fun. That was fun. And we had a great cadre that night as well. Um, I think each of the cadre members that I interacted with were really, were really awesome. They were really awesome. They love what they do. Um, they really love what they do. And you can tell they have passion for what it is that they do. So it was nice. It was nice. Um, and then we ended up going back to the TTB and we were done. So they had us pack up our stuff return our rugs, um, do everything. We had to do everything. Um, and so we got back at like 0500. And I think I took three naps that day. I took, like, they came in to do some things in the room or in the, in the tent. And um, we were done with that. And then I went back, slept on the cot, came back. They needed something, went back, slept on the cot, for like an hour so we had some downtime after we were done cleaning and packing up um and then it was time to leave we did a full-on aar which was nice with our lieutenant colonel he was awesome as well um we took pictures we did our hua stuff you know and then it was time to go listen when it was time to go when the buses arrived it was like, oh my goodness, it was noon, the buses arrived and we were like, we are out of here. We are out of here. <sighs> it's 12.30. Buses ain't moved. We're sitting, sitting. And we're like, what's happening? Cadre comes on the bus like, oh, the first bus won't move. Excuse me? The first bus won't move? Yeah, it won't start. What type of foolishness is this? What are you talking about? Stop it with the shenanigans. It's time to go. We all smell like hot ass on this bus. And you're telling me that the first bus won't move? So they ended up, <laughs> so after 45 minutes, they finally got the bus to move. We were all elated, just lit. Get back to the hotel room. Room's clean. I feel good. I'm like, time for shower. Boom. That was week three. And so... Today is Friday, and so early this morning, well, last night, I had to get all of our CIF, um, CIF equipment together. So I had to pull apart different things for the equipment um, and essentially, like, just get it together so that when we show up to, um, so that when we show up to CIF, everything's pulled apart and together. So we did that this morning at 0730. Um, and returned all of our stuff. So now my room is back to normal and it smells absolutely amazing in here and does not smell like hot gym socks because that's what the CIF like stuff, issued stuff smells like. Um, but that was my three weeks. It was really interesting. I learned a lot, but I feel so close to my platoon and my battle buddies because we went through this together so it was really interesting it's really interesting um i know for some it's like i don't know if i want to be an officer or i don't know if i want to go through bullock i don't know if i want to go through trainings um if you come into the army or any any source of the military you are going to have to go through trainings and guaranteed you're going to have a field day of some sort and field day i'm not talking about fun i'm talking about field day as in training out there in the woods regardless of what so just just know that um know that and I feel bad for those that are coming in January the end of January into February because yeah those 19 19 degree days that I had yeah uh they're gonna have that every single day it's not just one night so yeah um what to pack yeah lots of waffles lots of waffles waffle tops waffle bottoms silky bod bottoms silky tops bunch of gloves bring a bunch of gloves bring a bunch of socks figure out how to insulate everything that you have so that you're warm highly recommend it um yeah it was an interesting and interesting journey. I'm here for two more weeks. Um, I have training 
So we have um, like MDMP and different presentations and different things that we need to learn um, as a 70 Bravo leader and a 70 Bravo officer. So this should be interesting the next two weeks. The next two weeks should be interesting. Um, I know that some are probably sitting here like, what did she do to her hair? Yes, um, it is a wig. It's called the Nuna wig. Um, for some of us that are people who are going to go to training and don't feel like doing their hair and you're out here for a really long time, this wig right here, listen, everything, okay? Went through it, still cute, still popping, but went through it for three weeks with me out here in these streets, out here in the woods, out here in the bush, okay? It was out here. Didn't wear not once. We wore a satin bonnet the first week and then it was a wrap. So yeah, that should tell you. Is it army approved? Absolutely. Will it fly off when you take your ACH off? Absolutely not. Do you got a bobby pin it? Absolutely. I love this wig. Let me tell you something. I love it. So it's called the Nuna wig. I will leave descriptions below if you are ever so interested in it. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Like this, these, these three weeks have been interesting, to say the least. But they've been amazing. They have been amazing. So yeah. Um, I hope you guys like, subscribe, um, thumbs up this video um subscribe leave a comment if you have any questions concerns comments any of that feel free to reach out to me um and we will definitely discuss and deep dive into it um i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and a wonderful week and we will definitely be in touch thank you guys